the title of uh, my presentation today is Growing Financial Literacy, Global Understanding Through Group Dynamics and Social Interaction. And my name is Anthony Shalero. Um, I'm a history teacher at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. Um, basically, the title uh, just means that I'm the advisor of a club. So um, uh, we're going to talk today about my experiences um, working with young adults at Eleanor Roosevelt High School, and um, hopefully I can give some input and kind of just share some stories with um, kind of the experience that all the students have had and the success that Eleanor Roosevelt High School has been able to achieve because of the students' hard work. So um, our first slide, which is really important. Um, so. Um, wait, I don't know how to present. It's, oh, here we go. Okay. So um, it's very important for us to start with a light hearted opening joke. Um, how did the Roman Empire get split into two? The answer is they used a pair of Caesars. Okay. So I, I know that's important to keep it light a little bit before we get into some of these, these heady topics. So um, let's let's start talking a little bit about myself and uh, the program that we have at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. I've been a teacher for 20 years, 16 of them in New York City public schools, um, six years at Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Manhattan. Um, I'm primarily a teacher of AP World History, a little bit AP US History, and a little bit of economics and government. Um, I'm the club advisor of the Finance and Investment Club at Elro, the student government. I co-coach the varsity soccer team. I also have two other clubs that I help with. So basically, I am extremely, extremely busy. So um, one of the reasons and one of the things you guys are going to see is some of the basics of kind of the club principles that we have for success for the club that the principles that I've developed is because they were really out of necessity because on a day-to-day -day grind of the work week and the work day, um, it's really important to delegate and it's really important to kind of build structures within your groups. So um, it's, it's really important that in a busy schedule that I, that I implemented a lot of these principles. And um, a lot of the success that I have is because of Eleanor Roosevelt High School. The principal, Dimitri Celiani and Rigoberto uh, Sargent were uh, instrumental in helping me develop my program. The parents at Eleanor Roosevelt High School, which have done such a great job being involved with their students' education, uh, as well as just the students themselves. At Eleanor Roosevelt High School, the students work on a very, very high level. And every piece of success that we've had as a group or myself as a teacher is really attributed to their intelligence and their hard work. So Eleanor Roosevelt's program has really allowed the, the, the club to, to flourish. And that's why we're able to get so many accolades. I'm actually a very small part of the puzzle. And I'll, I'm just gonna share the, the bigger picture of the puzzle so you guys can develop hopefully a positive club atmosphere and some financial literacy for yourselves. And I think that's really the reason why I'm speaking. It's really just to talk about some of the successes we've had, but some of the things that I'm sure you guys can extract from it. So um, if we now switch to uh, some of the things as we have here, um, what we've accomplished. Um, so this is my sixth year at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. And every year um, I've, I've been involved in the, in the finance and investment club. So you can see my first year was 2016 to 2017. Uh, we, we had a third place finish in the Ithaca Stock Challenge, which was pretty impressive because the Ithaca Stock Challenge has about uh, 90 other schools that, that compete. And we finished in third place and that was my first year dealing with the finance club. And that was with stock market. Um, basically, they give you a certain amount of fictional money to invest in real stocks. So th the students did really well. They'd worked hard. And out of 90 students in the East Coast, we finished in third place. So there was already a good base of talent and really intelligence in the school. And it was really just a way of tapping that and finding a way to, to, to really work. And so with that 2016, 2017 
Um, we started with Spain youth unemployment. So from 2016 to 2021, we've tackled a bunch of different European countries and different and various issues. I think each one of the countries and the issues have built on each other. And we did, um, as you can see from 2016 to 2021, we had a, a steady level of progress. That's attributed from evolving each one of the topics and evolving the program and offering continuity. Uh, we were really especially proud of uh, the last the last two years, especially because in 2019, 2020 in Latvia, we finished in third place in the European challenge. And we, we took on the challenge of migrant flows. Um, 2020, 2020 and 2021, Lithuania, which was which was the, the most previous year where we finished in second place. I was very proud of the students because of them accepting the challenge of going green, which was a new challenge for 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 the euro the, the euro challenge the kids really kind of expanded their comfort zone and they were really able to express topics and areas of research that we hadn't done before we'd worked in with eastern european countries we'd worked with unemployment but we hadn't done uh worked with going green we we'd implemented that a little bit into our our, our latvia presentation but really it was kind of fortuitous that the Euro Challenge Zone had added this going green challenge because it really was the natural progression where we felt we were going anyway, in terms of working with uh, especially some of the Eastern European countries and looking at some of the models that they had for the business models of traditional models that they had to really modernize that. Going The going green edition really just met and, and, and kind of diverged perfectly to where we were going. So, so that's the accomplishments that we've had with the Euro challenge. I mean, obviously we have day-to-day -day um, accomplishments where because of our success successes in the Euro challenge, as well as the Ithaca challenge and the Federal Reserve, we have students that the, the, the Finance Investors Club, Investment Club has become quite popular, which is, which is a very good thing, but it's also a very challenging thing because sometimes we don't always have enough seats and enough desks because the students are really piling in the room because it's become the place to be, uh, which is a good thing, a welcome challenge, but it, it's its own challenge. Um, so if we go now after what we've accomplished, um, I can, right here, um, I can talk about really uh, what, what we did. Oh, I went too far. So there's always a lag. Wait one second. They go to. Don't go again. Oh, see, I went too far again. Okay, one second. Sorry about this. Computers are always a challenge. Nope, went too far again. One more, one back. There's a lag when I click back. Right now, I click back. It's gonna like turn back in a second. Those, as we look, those are some of the students who have involved, who've been involved in the programs that I've been so proud to be a part of. Um, yep. See, I went too far. Mm. Let me see if I can get to the actual, because I don't know why it's doing that. All right. So, so yeah, so when we look at the, all right, I, sorry for that disruption. So you can see that each one of the students that we worked on um, the last two years, those are the Zoom experiences that we've had with our presentations with Latvia and Lithuania, the last two challenges. That was its own challenge in and of itself to, to continue the program when we were interrupted by a pandemic. And we were able to do that because of the amazing Euro Challenge program. They had all reason and all rights to cancel the program in the middle of the challenge and say, there, you know, there's a global pandemic, there's no reason for us to have this. But the transition for them to allow the program to go to Zoom really heartened the students and it really, um, gave them something to dive into. And especially if you looked at the, the bottom, the bottom group, um, the bottom middle group, that was the first, uh, that was the Latvia challenge where these students, I thought when it was going to be a pandemic, I thought, well, this is going to be their chance. We went far, we've gone before, but far before, but you know, it's a pandemic. They're just going to kind of 
give it a chance to not do this, but they really dove in deeper and they really looked at the challenge to work harder and research a little bit more and, and look inside themselves. And it's really attributed to their great work ethic and um, how intelligent they are. So, so um, they really set the standard each of the year. So I can talk about what we've established then to kind of do that and what, what are the principles that I did to help with that and what might work with, what might work with, with, with your programs. So right here. So what would work in other programs? I don't do anything special at all. Really, it's something that anybody can do. As I said, I'm a very minimal part of, of the equation. I, what I like to do is I, I, I look at myself as the person who facilitates and gives the tools to, to really smart students to really let them go and, and make the most of the presentation and the more they learn about the, uh, about the whole subject matter. Uh, I myself found that as the years go on, the less I do actually, the more the students do on their own and the more they progress and the, the, the more they, they are a cohesive group and the better the presentation is. When, when, the, when I started in 2016, uh, I had no experience teaching government or, or economics and I hadn't had a finance and investment club ever. I, I came to Eleanor Roosevelt High School with the, with the previous uh, social studies teacher who was saying, I have too many clubs. You can have this club as the finance investment club. I knew nothing about it. So I said, let me just start and help. And I started diving deep, researching as much as I could, trying to impart as much knowledge as I could with the subject matter, um, which we still do. But as I said, I find the, the less you do in terms of you know, teaching them everything, the more they can get on their own. I work more as a kind of a guiding, a little bit of a guiding light and a guiding post of the things they should know and the check marks and the benchmarks that they should reach for the program, but less of getting and drilling individual content into the students. It has to be something that is a passion that they find themselves, that they develop within each other. So as I said, it's really common sense to me the, the reason for the success of the program at Eleanor Roosevelt High School in these meetings was excellent leadership. And if I was to say I had one possible like skill or real contribution to the program and to really help them flourish, I'm able to see, and I think anybody can do this, you can identify who is going to be the hardest worker in the room and who has a natural rapport with other students. So when I'm able to identify a, a, an excellent leader, that excellent leader is always a good conduit to the students. And as I see, I put some of the leaders that I've had there and they've just been amazing students that have gone on to great colleges. Um, Ali Greifer, Whitney Cohen, um, Isabella Campisi, Danielle Campisi, um, Tyler Lieberman, and JJ Ishikawa. These are students who are leaders. They're the hardest workers in the room and they are able to accept criticism and input. Now, when you have someone like that who is leading your group, the accountability and the, uh, the, the, the quality of content that they are able to create is very high level. And you can see that they're able to achieve many things. And so you want to be very careful when you're choosing your leadership. You can always give a couple people the leadership role at the beginning to see who's really gonna um, take the baton and lead the way. It's really important to assess them and see how they relate to other students and how they are going to import, impart the knowledge of what needs to be done in terms of targeting um, deadlines, as well as looking at things that have to be done for the group. So, so really that's, I, I feel like as a facilitator and as an educator, that's really where we step in, where we look at the, the students who are leading the group. And then from there, I think everything really just translates well. And you, you really find that everything is a lot easier once you have someone who can communicate and someone who is, as I said before, a, a conduit to really the goals of the Euro challenge, as well as what the expectation levels would be for the club. And one of the things is the, the Euro challenge as I said, you're, you as a as a as a as administrator slash educator are doing that with the leadership, but also as the program goes on, 
the more research that needs to be done, the more work that needs to be done. As you work and the days become weeks and the weeks turn into a couple months, you can see, and that's where we put thinning the squad, you can see that there are students, there's natural attrition. There are kids who do the most work and usually you don't have to decide or choose who's going to be the speakers for the, for the Eurozone. As the, as the weeks and the months pass, the hardest workers let themselves uh, be shown and they're the ones who wanna take those steps forward and the kids can figure out amongst themselves. So you're always in communication with the leaders to see who's working the hardest and who has that natural skill and that natural it factor. So that's why the leadership comes in with that social cohesion, which is important. And that goes along with self-awareness and self-effacement. The students need to be aware and saying, what can we do and what, what can we do to better the program and ourselves? And I feel like, especially in the last two to three years, the students have been better at asking the question and why I've, so, why I've seen them go a little further is they've asked me, what can we do better? Ask us questions, really try to stump us, really try to put us in the, in the spotlight, but on the spot. So really try to grill us and they wanna take on more. And, and this is something that happens, as I say, with social cohesion, the, the Euro challenge brings out a large closeness and, a, and, and kind of almost like a, a close knit community within the club. The Euro challenge kids become their own, in a sense, little army where they, ha they have their own goals, they have their own ways to achieve it. And, and when they are focused, my job is just to get them whatever they need in their research, in their preparation, as the person who's not the best content person in the world. My job is to understand everything the Euro challenge entails and to use all the tools that are available from the Euro challenge itself, from WISE, that they make readily available. So it's our job to look at WISE and look at the Euro challenge to see what they have to offer, but as well as what's in the building from senior teachers who teach economics and government to take advantage of, I put where it said being resourceful in terms of available tools. Um, David Anderson and Kyla Duarte within the program, they offer to any school. They have offer, they offer the, the, the uh, question and answer sessions. They offer the, the, the other Zoom sessions that they've recorded that are on the website. Everything is there. They give you the tools to succeed. So really as an administrator or, or a teacher and educator, my job is to really bridge the gap between those things. It's really to merge the tools that are available from WISE to the students and the leadership to what they need to achieve those benchmarks and really make sure that they are doing the work, that they are doing the research and they are doing the passion. I can't ever as an educator instill the exact passion that they would have themselves. But once you set them on the path and you let them know there are with their, their final goal that they have for the challenge, right? There are tangible points that they have to meet along the way. You're letting them know that and each one of the points they can reach and they're achievable. If you're able to lead, kind of lead them, lead that out to them, they will move along the path and then they will surpass, as I said, even the things that I'm telling them. And, and by, the, by the time they get to the, the finals of the challenge, you know, they're, they're speaking a, an economic language of literacy that even I'm impressed and astounded by the things that they're coming up with. It's not because I gave them those things, but it's because we told them kind of where the goal was and they really take the ball and run with it more than I ever imagined. I remember in 2016 and 2017, when we started the challenge, we were extremely intimidated. We were intimidated by private institutions that had had success for many years. We, we, we were hearing some of the financial literacy and experience that these groups had. We were going against private institutions that had economics and government classes freshman year. My kids are, are taking global studies, ninth grade. They're taking 10th grade AP World. 11th grade, they take US. They don't take an economics class till senior year. So these are freshmen and sophomores that have 
no financial literacy that are coming to my club. Maybe I need a club, right? With the idea they want to expand possibly their knowledge about financial literacy. But when we step into those suits that we had to dress up for, for orientation, those first couple of years, we were looking at schools, private institutions that were taking macroeconomics. And we're, we're looking at ninth and 10th graders that have macroeconomics language that we couldn't even compete with. So the trajectory that we had to succeed as a group was something that it needed to cultivate over years because the success we've had now, when a freshman comes into Elro, one of the first things they hear about is the success that we've had as a, as a finance investment club as the Euro challenge. So they come in saying, well, what can I do? And when a sophomore is there to greet them as a leader of the Euro challenge, they experienced it last year and they saw the success that they had. So those sophomores then start to teach those freshmen. And you can see that once you establish a program of success, those first couple of years were very rocky. The 2016, 2017 years of feeling a bit inadequate, as we said, going into programs with kids, with, with macro knowledge, private institutions, how do we compete with this to kids saying, I have to go to the Euro Challenge. Look what, look what Elro did last year. Because the students take ownership of the information, they take the challenge head on, and they look at the, the successes that we've done and the tools that WISE gives us, the tools that the school has set from, from the principal on, and they work extremely, extremely hard. And that's where we talk about leadership continuity, success breeds more attention and continuity. When they're communicating with each other, those 10th grade students talking to those ninth grade students, looking at the examples then of the juniors and seniors that experienced from the years before, they know that there's a script for success. They know that they've done well in the program. We, we never have it. Still though, even though we've had success, we never have the expectation level that this year we are going to do as well as we did the year before, because every year is a new challenge and every year is very, very difficult. We're going against other very, very smart programs. And we understand that these are still institutions that when they walk in day one, they have a teacher who's going to be teaching them about GDP, unemployment, you know, and, and, and all, all of these things. Whereas in, my, in here that we're just joining a, a part-time club which is just me and some computers and then their research skills. So we always understand we have to start each year from, from scratch. We have to start from the bottom again. So we've had some success, but I think the mentality of that, that they've seen the program have success before gives them uh, some ease and some comfort that they can succeed themselves. And um, that's also one of the things I'm, I'm really most proud about is that a lot of the students who do well in this program had no idea about economics before. And then after it have a great pride and a great accomplishment and actually change some of their majors. And even when they applied a lot of these schools uh, in college, the first conversation they have is about the Euro, the Euro challenge where a lot of these interviews, they ask them about their experiences because they're really proud. And every one of the groups, and when we write the names of, of the leaders, they all became very close friends. And they had these shared experiences that made the work also resonate. So really kind of when I talk about the title of my program uh, of financial literacy, it is equally as important, the, the social interaction and the group dynamics that between the leader and the members of the group and the advisor that everybody has open lines of communication. And with that work ethic and those realistic goals, they become very close. And each year, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of what they've done, no matter what, where we placed. I, we, never, we never look at the results. It's always just, what can we do? What can we do to improve? My students are naturally competitive. Uh, that, that happens. That's why they work so hard. It's one of the reasons. Um, so, but really, I, I think they'll tell you at the end of the day, uh, especially one of my seniors, especially uh, Whitney, was saying that she had no interest in economics.
But then when she realized and she took part in the Euro challenge, you know, that economics is really just kind of the story of people and that what people want and what people need and how, how to help those people and all of the po political things and social things that interact with the economics, sh she did find the value and, and the personal experiences that she had with the Euro challenge and, and these other students will always be there for her. Um, so really, um, that's, that's where I would probably end, uh, end this conversation to know that for anyone else who watched this, realize, understand that anyone can take these steps. We're a public school with, you know, basically some cute computers and some research and the, and the wise goals that they gave us and the tools, you can start to foster success in your programs and that every school is different and, and every program is going to be different. So for you, I would just say to maybe look at some of the principles with kind of the, the a, a leadership and the, the group dynamics to make that line of communication clear. Look at the wise principles and the tools that are there. And each year there will be progress. There's no fast solutions or guarantees, but with the work ethic and having fun, even if we didn't have any success, I'm, as I said, I'm very proud of Elro and I'm very proud of the students and, and everything that they, they accomplished. And I couldn't believe they'd ever achieve such a level. And I'm, and I'm extremely proud and humbled for them and to be a part of it. So.